All right, folks, we're on our final day here. We got some glue that's gonna dry overnight. And tomorrow I'll do a video of putting this Wimsurf's electrostatic generator into action. We've got it complete now. I've just got uh, simple little things to do. I've got a connector bar that I've gotta put in between the two capacitors right here. That'll be our way to switch the capacitor on and off. It actually connect the outside of both of those large capacitors to each other. And that'll complete the circuit, allowing us to use this system. Without that, you won't even see it working. Uh, well, what I've done for building capacitors here is I've got a three inch in diameter piece of black PVC pipe and this is an entire sheet's width of aluminum foil wrapped all the way around the inside and the outside of this PVC pipe and that's on both sides. Absolutely do not build capacitors this big if you're going to attempt this at home. Just a single one of these capacitors at this size, you may not think it, but just that little bit of aluminum foil fully charged right there will lay you out. If it won't, obviously, maybe even kill you. Uh, the two of them, though, combined, that's a dangerous combination. That's a large capacitor bank right here. So please build something maybe just, if you're going to use 3 inch, just go about 4 inches on either one of these in the height of your aluminum. That's a safe, nice, small capacitor. That's still going to hurt you. It's going to make you weak in your knees when you get hit by it. So don't take that as any kind of joke. But a capacitor this big, you've got to know what you're doing and never leave this thing charged. If somebody was to walk up and hit these two combined and fully charged, it would absolutely just probably end their lives. Uh, so anyways, just as a safety measure there, I, these are not what I'd suggest building as your capacitor towers. I just want a very high voltage discharge out of my uh, the ends of my points here. And you can tell we've got our discharge balls mounted off the top of our capacitors. And I've got out of the center of this bolt, which I'm going to show you here in a moment, I've got a set of wire brushes that actually go down and touch the inside piece of aluminum foil. So it's just connecting a circuit from this bolt to the actual inside piece of aluminum foil, which is wrapped around at exactly the same height. You don't want to off stage those. You want them right at the same height inside and outside. Uh, uh, that's coming off of here both to our discharge ball on this side and then going back to our comb. Uh, this bolt is insulated because of the wood being an insulator. And it's just a 2x4 and a 2x2 and a hole drill through it. I've got a nut on the bottom of the bolt here so that you can actually tighten it all down. I've got the cable lug running up to our negative capacitor. I've got the washer with our comb sitting on it. Now you can see the comb positioning. It's done really well. They're positioned just off the surface of our disc on either side there, if I can kind of give you that aspect ratio. Uh, that's gonna pick up all the static electric charge created by our brushes. And there's our brush, uh, brush tips sitting there rubbing against one of the uh, aluminum plates here. And if you follow the line setup, if you follow the set of lines all the way through and across, the other brush is touching dead in line. Uh, so it's actually in circuit with this uh, aluminum plate over here. And that's actually scrubbing off positive electrons and negative electrons. Well, let's go negative electrons and positive electrons and making sure they don't go by each other. So there's more negative on one side and more positive on the other. And what these are doing is actually scraping electrons off of the aluminum plates. And what's happening here is, just like any capacitor effect, is those electrons are being held to those aluminum plates by the electrons on the opposite plate. And because these plates are rotating in opposite directions and your combs are brushing in opposite spots, Spots. You'll notice the high spot on both of those combs is an opposite of each other. And that's allowing so that there's a positive charge on this side and a negative charge on this side. And those positive and negative charges, just like a uh, north and a south pole on a magnet, will actually pull towards each other. So they're actually magnetically locking each other, trying to get to each other, and the dielectric material keeps that from happening until they get all the way around to our combs. So they're actually holding electrically, like through the electromagnetic effect, all the way until they get to our combs. Our combs are actually gonna brush those electrons off and we're gonna in the middle of our capacitor towers. Uh, that goes on both sides. We do not put any of the charge actually directly to the outside. These are just gonna be, like I said earlier, electrically connected with a connector rod between the two of them. Uh, and then once again here, we've got the positive charged electrons coming from this brush, sweeping across, being held electromagnetically onto the plates until it gets to this comb. That comb is gonna take those positive electrons and bring it over into the top of this capacitor onto the inside of it. So now we've got both a negative and a positive uh, charge in both of our capacitors. As long as the outsides are linked together, once we get up to charge, we're gonna see an arc across these uh, spark gap balls that we have here. 
uh, that's actually going to be able to gap probably pretty big. So we've got them able to swing out and change the gap. They come almost all the way together or swing all the way out. Uh, once again here, let me just show you the, the brush positioning is just above your combs. Uh, you don't want them too close to your combs, otherwise they're actually going to start picking off from each other and it's going to mess up the, uh, the event that's taking place right here. Uh, you actually can go a little higher up than I've done. I actually start moving these just a little bit once I get this up and running tomorrow when the glue's dry. I'll actually be able to adjust it just slightly and see where I like it to be. And I'll show you where exactly it seems to work the best once I, once I get there. Uh, so we've got our drive rod once again coming off of there, which I'm actually going to replace tonight. I don't like how small it is, and I'm going to try to build a better way to, to grip it through here. To get the belts tight enough to pull evenly, uh, you have to put a lot of tension on there. And with these nylon pulleys, I found it was a little difficult to try to get it to stay. So I'm either going to have to put in a different drive rod that's thick enough to drill all the way through to set that screw all the way through it, and that'll lock it together. So I'll, I'll show you that tomorrow when we go to use the system. So there you go. There's just the simplest way to build a uh, Wimshurst electrostatic generator. It's just all made out of wood, this whole platform. If I go and just grab this one side here, you notice it's all screwed together. It's all one platform so you can move it around, nothing's getting jostled. Because the last thing you need to be, have to do here is try to deal with these two large capacitors in any other way. And also, the last thing here uh, that I've got to do is also put a handle uh, that's linked to this discharge rod on either side. There'll actually be wood insulated handles that'll be all the way out over here so you can actually maneuver your discharge points from long ways away from either side. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed. This is Mr. Teslonian in the Teslonian Man Show.